All right, so um, there's an important concept when it comes to uh, whether or not a body retains an atmosphere, and that is, what is its escape velocity? So how much speed does any object need to have in order to escape its gravitational influence completely? Okay, um, so the escape, reaching the escape velocity um, requires a body to have more speed than simply being in orbit. So for example, our International Space Station um, has not reached escape velocity. It is not free of the gravitational influence of the Earth, but it's you know, the gravitational influence that causes it to remain in orbit. So reaching escape velocity is a much different um, animal. So um, here's the physics of escape velocity. If you have any object, let's say it's the Earth, right? And you have some, I don't know, object that you want to reach escape velocity, let's say it's this rocket ship, um, you have to send it out with enough of an of a speed that it can eventually reach orbit and be or go past orbit and be completely free. All right. So how do we figure out what the speed needs to be in order to have some body completely escape from our gravitational influence? Um, it comes down to energy. So if we think about, let's say, here's us, you know, standing here on a nice fall day, and we want to, um, I don't know, achieve escape velocity by jumping straight up in the air with some initial velocity V naught. Um, what's going to happen is that as we jump into the air, the um, kinetic energy that we jump with is going to eventually go to zero, and we're going to end up with some gravitational potential energy given by our height above the ground. And what potential energy means is that there's the potential for that energy to be transformed into something else. In this case, it would be transformed back into kinetic energy as you land on the ground with the same final velocity as you started with. So um, this idea of energy conservation is involved in uh, calculating the escape velocity. Okay. So this is the physics of escape velocity. And now I just want to show you the math for those who are curious about the math. So what happens is that we have to have um, the initial energy equal to the final energy. Because all energy is conserved, it can neither be created or destroyed. But what happens is we have some kinetic energy of our body when we launch plus its gravitational potential energy. And that has those at the initial time have to be equal to those same terms, the gravitational and the kinetic at the final time. Okay, so the kinetic energy of an object is given by one half its mass times its velocity. The gravitational potential energy is in this case, sorry, given by a negative GMM over R. And notice that this looks really similar to our formula for the force of gravity, right? So the force of gravity is related to the gravitational potential energy, but instead of an R squared, as in the case of the um, force, it's an R. Okay, so all of that at the initial time has to be equal to the situation at the final time, one half m times v final squared, plus I'm going to run out of room here, minus g m m over r final. But if we escape the influence of gravity completely, then r final is infinity, right? Theoretically, if you're escaping an object's gravity, then you can get infinitely far away. And what that means for us is that the final gravitational potential energy is zero. So that term falls out completely because our object is getting so far away that it has no potential for its gravitational energy to be converted back to kinetic energy as it falls back. It will never fall back, right? Okay, and the other thing that we notice is if our object gets infinitely far away, it'll slow down as it does so, just as when I jump in the air, I slow to a stop before I turn around and fall back down. And so our final velocity here is going to be zero. And so then what that means is if I solve this equation for my initial velocity that I need to reach escape, 
um, this entire term here moves to the other side of my equation. I have the mass of my object on both sides of my equation, so that drops out of the picture. And when I solve for my velocity, I get the square root of two times g, the gravitational constant, times the mass of my planet divided by the radius of my planet. So this is my escape velocity. or escape speed, you can call it either one. Velocity just means it has a direction assigned to it. Speed means it's just the absolute value of that number. Okay, so this is where I was trying to get to my escape speed for the planet. And you can see that it's really simple to calculate because all you need to know is a planet's mass and the planet's radius. 